Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have Mana with us and we're doing another episode of Sipping Lattes. So we just had an awesome morning training session where we kind of exchanged a little bit of what we do. So she's an amateur boxer and one of the coaches here at Martial Spirit. So she showed me a little bit of boxing, yes. which is fun. Haven't done boxing properly in a really long time. Even though we box in Muay Thai, it's a little bit different with the stance and the movement and rhythm. So that was a lot of fun. And I got to show a little bit of Muay Thai and also a little bit of Aikido, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit, but yeah. it was good enough to challenge me. <laughs> yeah. So check that video out if you yeah. want to. Um, and yeah, so how'd you find the training session? It was very hard. So I've, I've done, so I'm a boxer, yeah. but I've done a little bit of Muay Thai yes. six years ago. <laughs> maybe for a year and um, Muay Thai wasn't very natural to me so I moved to boxing and now I remember why it wasn't natural to me <laughs> actually Muay Thai wasn't natural to me either I think I did I did Muay Thai yeah and then I did a bit of boxing and that was much more natural to me as well yeah so I did boxing with coach Adam Nahal yeah Adam yeah. Nahal yeah so he's yeah. my first boxing coach and we did that for quite a while I think maybe like how long like a couple of years Wow. I used to do like weekly privates with him. Yeah. Um, now that explains your punches. <laughs> that explains why spring pu springs punches are so good. I'm a fan. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Coach Adam was my first boxing coach before yeah. Coach Luke, and he actually introduces Coach Luke. Right. Yeah. So that's how that kind of. Um, yeah, yeah. That's how evolved. Luke started. Yeah, with yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, so I haven't done boxing properly in a long time, and I think like you were saying with Muay Thai, it's hard if you're not kicking all the time because it kind of feels like your legs don't work that yeah, way yeah, yeah yeah but she got it just fine yeah i tried <laughs> it's hard it's hard um i feel like my legs were tree trunks yeah <laughs> so remember when you showed me the kick and i was like oh so yes so so do you like kick this way <laughs> so how do i do it again <laughs> oh no so why did you yeah. transition to boxing and like make that your thing like why didn't you just do both um I got injured doing Muay Thai. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was quite frustrated with it because mm. I was learning how to kick yep. and I was trying to get the mechanics of it. Mm. And then um, I hurt my knee and then I went to the physio and the physio said, but before that, I used to walk past the boxing class all the time and I used to see coaches like teach boxing and I was yeah. like, I feel like I'd be good at that. Yep, yep. And, and then kind of like connect to that. Yeah, movement. yeah. yeah. Um, but I was doing Muay Thai because I like the elbows and the yes. kicks and I was like, I need all these tools for yeah. self-defense, right? Um, but I was really bad at it. <laughs> and I used to walk past boxing and I was like, maybe I'll be good at that. Yeah. And I went to the coach and I said, can I do boxing? Oh, that's cute. And he said, no. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Why? Nice. He said, Why uh, say no? I don't know. He's like, um, I think you'll be you'll be better off doing Muay Thai. Just stick to Muay Thai for a bit. I was like, oh, okay, fine. I'll just keep doing it. And then That's, I got injured. Oh, no. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, and the physio said, well, you can't kick anymore because you injured your leg. So oh. just box. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. So what did you knee actually? Um... Did you get to the Baker bottom of it? cyst at the back of a my cyst? knee? Yeah. Wow. So I think that's from inflammation, yeah. like poor yeah. kicking technique. Okay. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Actually, it's not really. Yeah. It's not that rare for people to start Muay Thai and get injured. Yeah. Like okay. having like hip injury, knee injuries, like joint injuries, um, just from being really tense when they're kicking. Yeah. Or just kicking too hard too soon. The, yeah. That was, yeah. I think, one of my problems. Yeah, too yeah. hard, too soon. Mm. You eager beaver, right? Like you yeah. want to train like all the time. Yeah, you just want to go like kick really hard all the time, and that's yeah. when you get kind of. Um, I've seen people like start and they look like they're doing really well. Yeah, because their body's not really trained in that. It's not ready like for. Said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then I'm having like chronic injuries. Yeah, and it really kind of gets in the way of their training. Yeah, yeah, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, slow and steady. Like yeah. I would say, slow and steady. Absolutely. Like what we did today. Like I think that's plenty. Like even twice a week. Yeah. Just nice and slow that way. Yeah. Um, ease your body back into it because there's so many little muscles that kind of help you protect all the joints around it. I think yeah. I had actually I had hip issues as well. Hip start. issues. Yeah. Right. Because I had a really weak like exterior rotation in my glutes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because you know how it's like internally rotating when you do and then a kick, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the externals were too weak. So because I was always internally rotating, I was like doing that too much and then plus kicking. That was like constantly the same movement. movement so I yeah. need to strengthen the exterior to balance So you it can out. pull back the Yeah, and just kick? to balance like the whole entire yeah. area. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's your recovery from the kick, right? That's um, I don't actually know. Like I don't actually think like that's too much of recovery. It's just more like all the muscles were like so internally rotated and tight all the time. Because right. I was always doing that movement instead of like having any kind of movement that was doing like clams. The like, clams would be the opposite of that. So doing lots of clams. Clams. Mm. So like lying uh -huh. on your side. Oh and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or like doing ballet. Because like ballet is a lot of like external rotation. Right. So that would be like 
the perfect kind of opposite movement to kicking. Hmm. It, you need that like complementary movement yeah, in there, yeah, yeah, don't yeah, yeah. you? Yeah, for yeah. sure. If you're yeah. doing always the same thing, like, I think that's when you start ending up like with um, overuse injuries. Yeah. Same with boxing yeah. too. It's all like um, shoulders, shoulders, mm -hmm. and mostly like um, anterior, mm -hmm. and mm. people don't work work their posterior, mm -hmm. and that's when yeah, you get injured. Like, everyone yeah. like always trying to go like, that posture. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm always like in this sort of stance, and I'm like. Yeah, I see my videos with me too. Sometimes I'm like, oh, like in stance I'm alright, it looks fine. But yeah. then once I'm like walking, like I need yeah. to be really conscious about pulling my shoulders back. Yeah, yeah. same. Oh, um, another thing that I notice is when I walk, I walk with my back foot behind me. Why? Because that's my boxing stance. Oh, okay. That <laughs> it's makes sense It's become such a big part of my movement. Yeah. Like even when I do anything, like dance for example. Yeah. You always have that kind of... Yeah. And if the instructor's like, no, bring that foot forward. I'm like, I'm trained to do this. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I can't take it out of my movement. I walk like that. I turn to people and I'm like, hey, what's up? What's going on? It's <laughs> like actually like, that's when Chloe started doing Muay Thai as well. Like it's yeah. really hard for her to adjust her feet. Um, yeah, right. Because she's like done boxing for so long. And every time and it's like that. that, it returns back to this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah so when you told me this, I was like... Oh. Yeah. I think it's really interesting you kind of start cross training during martial arts and getting your body to be adaptive to it. I think it helps, doesn't it? I think it? it's helpful. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. Yeah. How'd you find the falling? We did a little bit of back roll. I thought I'd be, yeah, I thought I'd be really <laughs> bad at it. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm like, I don't trust my body to do this, but I wanted to challenge myself and I think I was, it was okay. Like, she did it. She I, did it. Like, I want to go back and do it again. Yeah. I think that's a good thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You don't want to try something and be like, I'm never going to do that again. It's yeah, not natural exactly. to me. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to have like a bad first experience. That's so right. I think when you're starting out something new, especially something like falling as an adult mm. as a kid like kids they just do it by themselves anyway you tell yeah. them not to do not it scared like, of anything yeah, they, yeah. they don't care yeah um but as an adult i think it's important when the first couple of classes not to go too far too soon yeah like you've done like you use your body for a very long time so you're very aware of it but usually i think from starting out someone completely new we probably just go like with the rocking back and that's it yeah just getting used to rocking all the yeah. way back and that's it like starting from like class one and they just build it up in time because yeah. um yeah falling i feel like it's really important to teach well because otherwise it kind of spreads through the whole entire um, oh experience. you have to lay the foundation Correct. really well yeah because otherwise when they start falling and like higher level they always carry the same tension because they haven't worked it out from the basics yeah um or just having a really bad experience like one time i think i did a fall when i was younger yeah and i fell with like holding a weapon we're supposed to do like a fall over it and I don't know why Holding like, a weapon Yeah like I was holding like a sword And I was supposed to like fall over the sword Not a real sword <laughs> And then I was like, <laughs> like in a demonstration I don't know why Like just at that moment I freaked out looking like I had the sword here Which yeah, technically yeah. Without it You can just jump over your arm Yeah And I freaked out And I did like a funny fall And ever since then Like for a very long time afterwards I was very scared of doing that fall Yeah So I kind of had to go back And like Relearn Retrain I like, relearn And go back to the basics And build it back up again yeah. So like that's one of those things I try and get the guys to Fully to avoid yeah. So that they always like Have good Confidence In yeah. their body yeah. yeah In their skills mm. And like with everything You have to lay the foundations yeah. Right Otherwise yeah. unlearning it Or undoing yeah, it is Yeah So slow and steady I think from the start Especially yeah. falling It's yeah. good And I think like Yeah you do a great job With the back roll yeah. Once you got the back roll down I feel like tumbles And everything would be fine What's, what's tumbles? Tumbles like forward rolls Like little balls Oh, so cool. <laughs> everything sounds cool. Everything related to falling sounds great to me. I'm going to take up IQ. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 I'll show you how to do all the falls. Yeah. yeah. Falling yeah. is like one of those things that didn't come naturally to me at all. Um, really, really bad at falling. Like, yeah. you asked my like first instructor how bad my falling was. It was really bad. And I first came to Melbourne here, fall was really bad as well. Because mm -hmm. I just didn't have like the muscle understanding or control. Yeah. Because falling is like, it is really floppy and you have to be relaxed. But actually, there's a lot of muscular things happening so you have oh, to have yeah. that strength in your legs yeah, strength yeah. in your core and I didn't understand all of that at the start right. um, but yeah so it's fun it's and, really then relaxing, and then relaxing and then letting relaxing go. and then trusting your body so yeah. it's like kind of two of the balancing the two like if you're really tense you're probably going to injure yourself because yeah. you're like hard too like, hard yeah, yeah like you yeah. go and you're like breaking like yourself a log. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time if you're too floppy and you just let your body fall yeah. and you don't have that control of like you're like a bag yourself, of potatoes correct you can yeah. break as well yeah. <laughs> so like <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Any sort of like learning new skills gives me such a high. Like Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Teach yeah. me a new skill. Like um I think that's why I like I came to boxing too, because I was always like training to get fit and stuff, but there's no purpose behind 
right. lift. Yeah, yeah, mm. I, I, yeah, like lifting heavy weights. Okay, so you can use that like when you lift stuff when you move home or something. But <laughs> but learning a skill, mm, you yeah. know, yeah. Mm. That's what I would like when we first um talked about doing this episode. Mm. I was like, I'm really excited to talk to Mano. Then I was like, oh, you know, it'd be even cooler if we yeah. could like do the training session before that. I don't yeah. know about you, but I feel like for me, training like is a form of communication. Absolutely. Like you know, yeah. I feel like. I understand you better if I train with you before that, and yep. it kind of flows from there a bit more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, or like I don't know. For me, like bonding is training. So absolutely. <laughs> and I feel the same way with sparring. Like when I spar yes, someone, yes, yeah, yeah. I know them. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Like you can see like when someone's having a good day, bad day, like the emotional state just from training. You don't have to really talk to them about no. anything. You yeah. can just tell so much. Yeah. And I feel. I don't know. Like. Oh, that's our way of communication. Yeah, like that's yeah. just like my way of like communicating. That's yeah. why I love training so much. Um, or like you know we have like really good training partners as well oh uh, they <laughs> work their like, weight in oh, gold yeah 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 <laughs> and yeah. i'm so lucky like in the boxing yeah. community that we have at martial spirit six girls or five girls i think we have five girls now you chloe antonia viv um alani alani that's five that's five people did i count you mm-hmm. yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's you chloe me chloe alani, alani. vivian antonia that's five five okay, people five. yeah so they got five girls in the boxing five team. girls in the fight boxing team, team. Yeah. fight team all of them similar weights i know in the 50 kilos you guys are all similar weights that's crazy yeah. we yeah. are like this like our, our probably Big only difference? me and jess like me and jess are on the same weight yeah and then everyone else is like all different weight classes yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's good to have that too oh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah but then let's say if you can't get a sparring like we mm. go out sparring mm. all the time and if you can't get anyone you can just train with the girls yeah. and and we push each other in every session you know yeah. it's, it's they're, amazing they're really cute the boxing team <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys are really cute <laughs> do you see a little video that we made of i the did rest? oh my god <laughs> well, me and cc are thinking i should like do you want to do something like that i'm like with kicking yeah yes. i like, i, I could i just need help with like the dressing up bit because I, like, I wouldn't even know where to start alani um, was the same she's like i can't do all the makeup and stuff and i'm like that's because you don't need it <laughs> you guys are great it was really cute. i was put a little snippet in there yeah 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 for sure um mm-hmm. all right let's go back a little bit okay let's tell the guys about yourself um, oh because i know who she is but okay. obviously you guys probably might or might not know who she is uh, hmm. it's, hard, um, it's hard to like tell them it's hard, it's hard to, to like, introduce, introduce my, yeah because yeah. i've never done this before <laughs> <laughs> um well i'm mana um i'm the assistant coaches for boxing at Marsha spirit started off as um well practicing muay thai but then moved to boxing gradually and um i've been boxing for about let's say five years i think awesome. five years now i had a year off in between but um it's been going good um went to the nationals which is probably one of my biggest achievements because i i was never a natural athlete and um i relate uh, i don't know (laughs) but um but yeah like boxing's been been very rewarding and um Mm. and then luke told me that um because i've been a good student he thought i would transition well into being a coach and while i never gave it a thought before he put that thought in my head Mm. but i thought this will be a good way for me to share my knowledge and since i've been doing that I feel like I've become a better boxer yeah. through it. Yeah, so. that's what Kuk Chris says as well. Like he yeah. improved his Muay Thai ever since started teaching. Yeah, because you have to break it down and like, I guess communicate it. And yeah, you have to think about it much more as well. Exactly. Um, as opposed to just doing it. Yeah. Um, without thought. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you teach something and you think about it. Yeah. And then you go, oh, I'm gonna use that in my thing now. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I wish yeah. I was explained this way. And then Correct. the coach says something and you process it completely differently because yeah. now you're thinking about not only how to do it yeah. but also how to teach it correct if yeah, that makes sense yeah. yeah yeah um mana was probably one of the first students that we had when we first started boxing at martial spirit yeah because yeah, i we we had coach luke and we had like no boxing students mm-hmm. um or like just pure boxing because we just had people from other programs trying the classes yeah um i think and then you and chloe were the first ones who walked in and we started the little yeah. fight team <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's been then like i I still remember doing boxing with you guys at the start. I don't really remember. Yes. That. Yeah. I came in to spar you. Oh, is that how we met? Yeah. Oh. Ages ago when Marsha, um, I, I didn't even know about Marsha Spirit back then, but um, I remember we teed up sparring mm. and then mm. I came and sparred you. Why was that? Was that because Luke was doing that Sunday boxing? Yeah. Um, oh. Remember he did that, um, what, was that? Uh, what was it called? Sparring day. 
yeah aspiring day and he had also like a bunch of other students as well and i remember he used to do like a sunday session yeah oh, God, i remember all these yeah all these details. yeah it was a long time ago but it yeah. was a really well organized firing event oh, so yes, you yes, had yes. people from different yes, gyms come in yes, I and we put our weights down and then i spied you oh mine was fun yeah. oh I, I came back and i was like she hurts oh, it hurts <laughs> like you punched me and you saw my head pop back and you're like are you okay and i was like i, I feel like i'm i'm in here with oh, two no, people no. like she's vicious but she's also really oh, kind God. and sweet someone said that to me the other day like can you start smiling when you punch and i'm like <laughs> i was like i'm smiling at you yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. Not smiling at punching you I'm i see a lot of like thai boxers do that too like um smiling yeah, yeah. and it's so confusing spring it's, it's really <laughs> confusing it's hot it's really confusing you're right someone was smiling at me the whole entire time we fought and i was like i'm not sure about this yeah yeah <laughs> it's like, that I, I don't know like what headspace to be in no. are we friends are we mates or are I we think, spying like, smiling helps get into like a playfulness of yeah because yeah, i think yeah. you're like more of a naturally more stressed or tense person when you're um fighting yeah you want to relax more i think that smiling kind of like reminds you of like to, to be, be relaxed. Like, yeah to be looser to yeah kind of, like, have a play you know because like you know muay thai is quite playful it is yeah, yeah. To, like bring the element to it in a fight with like your hands up yeah <laughs> yeah it's fascinating yeah yeah so yeah. i used to spar mana and we used to like um because I, I was still doing interclubs back then like for muay thai. yeah so i was like oh. luke is always organizing the boxing because he was helping me prepare for interclubs yeah yeah so then he would like kind of try and help me in my boxing with you guys right um, but yeah so that's that where fun. we met it was a long time ago uh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a long time ago and i was yeah. like seriously contemplating like doing boxing and muay thai as well together yeah together yeah and i don't know like everything just kind of um naturally went towards muay thai you want to start competing professionally i don't know about you it's just like you know you just kind of zone in and yeah like, of course. all your attention goes into yeah yeah into and that. also like the two like even though there's like there's punches in both those sports mm. um the way the fight progresses is very different like um because yeah. what you learn in boxing yes there's a few transferable mm. skills but it's completely different like they're two Correct. completely different yeah, sports it is yeah, yeah. so it'll Lucas, be too much different like if you were doing i didn't more, realize that after yeah, like yeah. after that it's like oh you know it's actually really quite different like mm. you can take elements of it in like principles so lots yeah. of principles that luke is teaching me from ages ago i'm still yeah. working at them now yeah <laughs> um, like it's taken me that long to even like really understand it yeah because i was doing a lot of classes with them and like these are really complex kind of like principles that you can practice for a very long time um so yeah still like till this day i still like try and work on the things that he's been teaching me from ages ago mm. um and yeah like sometimes like a kind of pop in my head like when you're doing something more time like oh yeah like luke does that like, yeah you know? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and, like we also started doing like luke's classes as well that's right really yeah he was yeah. in some of the um, classes yeah but yeah it's been a lot of fun yeah, yeah. Um, but like in Muay Thai, you don't do like um, head movement or like slips because if you slip, you might like correct. slip into yeah, a knee correct. or if yeah, you yeah, roll, yeah. You'll, they'll knee yeah, your head. Correct. Um, yeah. Like rarely, I think like a lot of, like people do, like they do do it. Um, like Slipping? I don't, like I, I try not to because I don't trust myself with oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just like, I just don't, <laughs> you know, enough. I just really don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. Um, it's a very that, risky like, thing to do of, like comfort yeah. but some people do like when they're more of like the playful and high level like the elite ones like, yeah. there's a lot of movement like kind of um similar to boxing i guess but yeah. definitely yeah not at this level not at my level <laughs> <laughs> i actually never see um like i was telling you yeah a lot of muay thai fighters even punch mm, mm. but um, yeah because we're talking about scoring and like how the scoring is a little bit different mm. um so in Muay Thai, like traditionally, the kicks and knees score much better, and the elbows they score really highly. So if yeah. you can cut someone with an elbow, or even like in professional elbows. and amateur as well. So or? amateurs, there is no elbows, um, unless oh, okay. in some states they do have elbow pads and they throw elbows. Right. Um, but then, yeah, mostly they don't throw elbows. So clinching mm. is just clinching is scored really highly if you can control and dominate a clinch. Right. And boxing is usually scored the least unless you're like giving them eight counts. Oh, okay yeah, like and you're yeah. really dominating with the punches yeah that's mm. right and that's why i guess like in muay thai when you punch it's not a setup like you commit to that punch because you're trying to hurt them yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah, or like you're trying to set up for a kick or something like you know yeah. like you're trying to find your range and you're using that to find your your i guess the you're highest scoring your, weapon yeah yeah yeah, mm. yeah um so tell mm. us about how you, so Man and I, we have like a couple of similarities. Mm. Um, we mm. both moved here in Melbourne, so we're not originally from Melbourne. Yeah. And um, 
I would say that she's probably more obsessed about training than I am. Aww. Like, she wakes up at like 5am and like, <laughs> does... Like, but you stay up late though. <laughs> I don't know why I stay up so late. But <laughs> it's unrelated to training, but I stay up late. Um, but yeah, I used to like, especially when we first met, I used to think like she was crazy. Because you wake up at like 5am, do your training. I was obsessed about yeah, training. Yeah, and then like go to work and then afterwards she'll, she'll go back to training again. And then repeat the whole thing. Like I... I couldn't just never get enough of yeah, it. Like she was, she she's still like that. Like today she woke up really early to train as well. Like, um, but yeah, you have that like commitment to training, which is um, really inspirational. I think Thank for you. everyone. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so how did you find moving to Melbourne and like just getting into the rhythm of training and then kind of transitioning into being like almost you know completely focused on developing on this, your yeah on developing this your sport. art yeah. That's a really good question. Um, I guess moving to Melbourne, it was quite easy for me because it's such a good city. It just makes you feel at home. Mm. Like um, originally, the plan was to go to America, but then I'm yeah. Me too. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Why did you choose Melbourne? I don't oh, or know. Australia? Like actually, well, okay, well, yeah. The, the, like tangent in my story because all my friends were like, we finished high school. And then we're all like kind of going to different colleges and stuff, right? And yeah. I wanted to go to America, but to go to America, I need to kind of finish all my SATs yep. and finish another year staying in Malaysia. Okay. Which I was like, I don't want to stay another year in yeah. Malaysia. I want to leave. Yeah. So I came here to my college and I'm supposed to like do all the SATs here. But I kind of fell in love with Melbourne. I kind of got used to the routine. And I was like, and I'll so just stay here for a little bit. Fall in love with yeah, yeah, but I, was, I wanted to go to America too. <laughs> oh my there God. There you go. See, right? so many similarities. <laughs> it's like, back to your story. Yeah. Um, but I decided Australia because I wanted to go somewhere where I didn't know anybody. Okay. Start fresh. Okay. Not that I was I, I had a like big life to like to start fresh anyway. But I was just I don't know twenty years old. But yeah. I was like I want to go somewhere where I can do all of this on my own. Oh my god. And then I moved cool. to Melbourne yeah. for for uni. Um, complete bookworm. And then after I finished my studies, I was like, okay, cool. So studies are done. Yeah. We have a job so we can support ourselves. Oh, good. <laughs> Time to get into some sort of sport. Very Asian. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> really? yeah it's like, it has yep. to happen in that order. Yeah. <laughs> you can't study <laughs> and have sport at the same time. No, yeah. it just doesn't Parents happen. Will disagree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I tried, um, what did I try? I tried lifting weights. Oh, wow. Um, it was quite fun yeah. but um, I wanted a skill like I said yeah. and then I used to walk past all these like martial arts gym, and at this stage I moved by myself yeah. so I was like I need to have some sort of self defense and oh, I saw cool. Muay Thai and yeah. I was like oh the elbows the kicks the knees <laughs> I wanted to learn wanted to all, all of them that, all, all of them <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I started like um, doing doing boxing yeah. eventually because yeah. um, it came more natural to yeah. me but that's how I started um, that's boxing. awesome yeah. how did you find that transition to like for me it was kind of surprising to see myself get so focused on training like oh, I've yeah. always been like focused on training but not to that degree you know what I mean where you find yourself like just mm. constantly training <laughs> like yeah. doing really nothing much else um, I can only speak for from my experience mm. um, and I, I haven't been a very athletic person mm. so boxing is the only sport that I've done mm. but it's so fascinating I, I would call my relationship with boxing like a proper relationship like it's probably my my first love yeah and Aww. and it'll always stay that way like yeah. not, like things will come and go but like boxing is is yeah. my anchor like yeah. um it's it's become part of my identity mm. and i felt that from the time i probably saw my first fight really yeah and yeah. i saw my uh, a, a fight of boxing and i was like this is so fascinating and then I started boxing with Luke and um, the techniques, even though it's just like, can I, four punches, jab, cross, boop, and an uppercut. Yeah. And, you know, you can Similar, lead and rear, yeah. but four punches, but there's so much science to it. Like you right. could study yeah. it for the rest of your life. And I think that's what was my focus and my obsession because I, I would, I was training. I think there was one day when I trained five times a day. <laughs> five times a day and I wasn't even sore from it because I was just high off that, yeah, that skill yeah, and yeah, that yeah, knowledge yeah, yeah. and I, I just couldn't get enough of and it and she's that crazy that I remember Luke telling me one day I was like where's Mana I walked in the gym and then you weren't there that day and I was like because you're always there yeah 
And then Luke's like, oh, I sent her like away for a week. I'm like, what yes! do you mean? I was like, what do you mean he send did. her away for a week? And he, yeah, and he's like, I just need her to, to like relax and not do boxing for a week. And yeah. I was like, you what? <laughs> I was like, what is that? <laughs> for a week. Yeah. He said I can't come in for a week to yeah. train. And I was like, at that point, I was like, oh, wow. Like, I, I don't think I could do that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I was like, I feel so bad that she I was still sent boxing away. in my head. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I was just like, I could relate to that, like, yeah. that level of like um, focus, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Luke sent her away for a week. <laughs> <laughs> he put a curfew on me. He's like, you just need to chew and you can't come into the gym. I was like, yeah, that's fine. One day, that's fine. And he's like, for a week. And I'm like, for a week. Okay. Maybe I can do something in my backyard. Yeah, I, know. It's like, I, was just, I think about that sometimes. And I'm like, I, like, you know, like especially in the last lockdown. Yeah. And just having that routine, um, I guess, shift it. You Change, know? yeah. And just not being able to train with your teammates or just do the regular thing it was really hard at the start to um find something that could compare yeah to that. i guess it's feeling less like you know what you're saying about that high where it's like i feel so fulfilled and like satisfied and like whole when i'm training in something that i am really passionate about mm. and even though i substituted something else with like fitness training or whatever it it's is, it's not the same as it's it? like i just don't have that like level of like like I just feel good about life yeah you know? um, yeah and it's so strange because I've been trying to like find that balance yeah and like to be okay in like any situation you yeah know, it's like a lesson that I'm trying to like to, to adapt yeah to adapt and yeah. just to be like not so dependent on like things to be a certain way for it to be okay yeah but it's yeah, so yeah. hard still because I like you know just having that realization it's like I think I I don't know I must have just really love it <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah that, that was me too so when the second lockdown um after the first lockdown mm -hmm. Um, we got back into outdoor training and training in the gym and mm. I was talking to the boxing teammates and we were like oh um, we did a good job with the first lockdown <laughs> but I don't think we can go back to online training again yeah. and the second lockdown happened and as much as we, we didn't want to do it online we got online for the first class and as we started rolling through the syllabus we are like oh I can do this yeah. oh yeah I can totally yeah. do this but it, it's just having that community your teammates mm. Um, and working towards a certain goal yeah. so when you have a certain goal in mind it just it doesn't become like a, a fitness thing where, yeah. where, you, where you see a progression mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah. I don't know where I'm going with no, this no I understand but, what you yeah. mean like yeah. I, it's been really hard to um, I, like for me it's been like I'm trying to schedule things in so like okay this time run or like you know this hour do this so yeah. it's kind of like set me up for like having like little daily goals so yeah. I stay on track Yeah. otherwise it's so easy to kind of just like oh, go yeah. off yeah and like yeah feel like a little bit like upset about things or like you know yes 100 feel a little bit down about life yeah um, but yeah it's so interesting to see that like how important that training aspect is like Absolutely. for me anyway yeah. um and i'm sure that everyone's the same too like in their own way mm. um but yeah like having that community i think is really important and and yeah. having the right type of coaches and the right type of team mm, mm, to because mm. um even even if you're the most committed person in the world if you don't have the right coach and yeah. if you don't have the right team it's just not the same correct yeah, yeah. you need someone to kind of feel that fire and like yes. to direct it as well yeah um and yeah i think that's what good coaches do i feel like you know they they not just feel that passion but they kind of always give you something to work towards or like you know they're always yeah they support you in different ways i yes. feel like you know like everyone needs support in a different ways whether yeah. it's like emotional support or like technique support or whatever it is like um every fight is a little bit different yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> no one you can't train two fighters the same way yeah. mm -hmm. or, or like two students the same way and and like luke's really good at that um so he always gives us something to look forward to yeah. so you roll uh, you rock up to class or, or online and you're like oh i don't know if i want to do this today <laughs> yeah and then he gives you something to think about or a syllabus or something to look forward to and i'm like now i can't wait to do this tomorrow yes, <laughs> you yes. know so so it's the it's important to find the mm. coach that's a, that that type of coach yeah. that can give you like progression mm. gives you a pathway mm. Mm. and how do you find yourself like staying motivated after all these years like do you think about it or it's just kind of something that just happens for you? motivation it comes and goes yeah honestly it comes mm. and goes but um i just know that i have to be disciplined with it yeah because um if you rely on motivation all the time it's not always going to be there. Yeah. there there's times when um let's say i have a bad fight yeah didn't Same. go my way 
<laughs> we have we have had this conversation yeah. in the past yeah yeah mm -hmm. um and then you rock up to the gym and you're like this is the last thing i want to do today i just want to sit at home and just feel sorry for myself yeah <laughs> but then you pick yourself up mm. you go to the gym you don't yes i acknowledge that i don't want to train today but i'm mm. just gonna go in mm. like even if i have to just shadow box for like yeah. two runs and come back or I'm, just help with someone else's yeah thing. yeah mm. um just just be disciplined about mm. it yeah and sometimes like isolating yourself isn't the right thing to yeah it, it's not I helpful that. yeah, yeah. It, it, like you want to do it some and you you do want to rest your brain and stuff yeah. but resting is different from isolating Correct. yourself like pulling yeah. away from everything yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and every um, bad experiences will happen mm. but good it's experiences will, will yeah. also happen you know so talking yeah. about that like how do you find transitioning to competing like you know from doing martial arts like kind of thing like training martial arts and pursuing that is one thing yeah. and then you have that like competition aspect of it as well and it yeah. kind of meshes in but sometimes it sits separately on its own mm. um, like how do you find that um for yourself anyway like transitioning to competing and like doing that actively yeah um well when i started boxing i never wanted to fight because um i always saw it as like i, I couldn't hurt another person <laughs> to win some points like yeah yep. It was a different mindset, of yes, course, but yes. now the mindset is different. It's, it's not sport. like um, yeah. I'm trying to hurt that person. It's more like I'm trying to score. I'm trying to showcase mm, my skills, yeah. or I'm trying to win this fight. So it, yeah. it's like it's like any other sport. Yeah. And um, someone asked me once. They're like, um, "This is someone that doesn't train boxing, <laughs> um, or or any martial yeah. arts." And they're like, um, "What did they say?" They're like, "Do you have to be angry at your opponent?" all the time and yeah. i'm like no yeah yeah it works against you correct and yeah. they're like that doesn't make sense how can you punch someone and then be friends with them at the same time i'm like okay well maybe i can give you this analogy because they were um they used, they were lifting weights they're like uh, yeah. if you can't lift a weight mm. would you be upset with the weight <laughs> <laughs> like no what would you be upset with well i tried to like do better the mm -hmm. next time i'm like that's how i see it your yeah. opponent is yeah. just like something that's there for you to like a challenge yeah, yeah but it's not something personal against them you don't want to lift a weight because you're upset with Correct. the weight yeah it's, it's like, yeah, yeah that's actually a good point it's yeah. hard i think especially at the start when i started competing to feel like it wasn't personal like, yeah like the whole experience wasn't like whether good or bad it was like a personal thing yeah um yeah i can't remember what fight it was and it just kind of became like oh it doesn't really matter who's in front of me like, yes you know but that's yeah yeah um it's just kind of like this thing that's moving you trying to hit that's it. right yeah <laughs> like, you know. it's almost like a video game I, th I i have to think about it like that yeah so i like take all emotions yeah, away yeah, from yeah. it it's mm. not about the other person it's mm. more about you mm. and that oh oh my god and that transitions so well into like normal life outside the ring right. as well like, right 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 yeah you don't see you don't take anything so personally anymore that's and true actually yeah, yeah. It, it's more about you and like that things that true. you can control yeah that's true yeah that's a good one yeah that's true so many things that I've learned from from boxing inside the ring that applies mm. actually outside mm. the ring. Like it makes you a better person. Like even every fight that you have, whether you win or lose, mm. there's so much to to take away from that yeah. experience. I don't know if it's like the same for you as well, but I feel like whenever I compete or you know, because I think I think the competition um, that particular moment it's so yeah. alive because it's like it's right in your face and it's. I guess you feel more alive than you would regularly like just chilling out because you yeah. have to be so aware, aware of everything yeah and i think it kind of brings out um a lot of yourself as mm. well you kind of see a lot of patterns in yourself or like i guess um thought processes and stuff like that for me it's like a really um interesting <laughs> kind of like interesting journey to kind of see more of myself more yeah. clearly yeah like, in yeah a, in yeah. a strange way yeah 100 yeah. percent mm. um I I was talking to Alani about this once, and I was like, when you're in the ring, you can't hide behind oh, anything. Yeah. That yeah. that's you. That's your pure self. That's so scary. Yeah. <laughs> it so is scary. quite scary, and it I guess is. that's what, um, yeah. it ties back to the previous conversation we're having. When you spar someone, you know them. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> they they can't hide behind correct, anything. Correct. Yeah. And I feel like um like I've had a lot of good friends that I fought yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right, you did. I don't know what it is. It's like, I guess that moment when you shared it and then afterwards, like, yeah, we were trying to hit each other or like, I guess, hurt each other. But it's strange because afterwards I felt like really connected to yeah. them as well. <laughs> like in a weird way. Um, yeah. But yeah, like that's, that's interesting for me, like competing because I feel like everything becomes, like every fight cam, I feel like it's like this strange, um, 
not purification kind of thing but it's like you know it is a, it, yeah, yeah like, like I don't you're getting molded yeah, like yeah, yeah, every yeah. time like, like it's like every time it's like um less like you know less like complexities that you don't need like less like kind of going back to the necessities yeah and just understanding yourself a little better that, that's what i find interesting about the whole process yeah. not so much about like um i guess the fighting bit which is like interesting in, in its itself but mm. um just that but that refinement know, yeah refinement and getting to know myself a little bit better each time yeah like that's really interesting for me yeah and that's why i want to do it too that's why i keep competing like regardless of like wins or losses mm. i know that every time i step into that ring and step out i'm a better person that's from true it, yeah know? yeah that's yeah. true yeah. you can't get that just from uh, there's nothing wrong with just doing boxing or any other mm. sort of martial arts without competing but that's the reason why i personally yeah, compete that's the reason why i started competing as well because yeah. i was like, had no interest in competing yeah and then i guess it was like I guess the next step to improve is to compete. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I guess I should just give it a go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been like, it's it's crazy. It's so mm. interesting to see that. Um, and like for you personally, because I think like I'm quite a emotional person. So yeah. I take like the good and bad quite extreme. Um, like, I take the bad quite badly as well. Mm. Um, like, how do you bounce back from, let's say you're talking about having a bad loss or, you know, just having like a bad run. Like, I think everyone has that in their journey. Yeah. Um, like, how have you kind of managed that to continue training after so long? I think I try and stay positive toward, um, with every experience. Mm. I try to cut myself some slack. Mm. I'm like, um, I, I can be hard on myself. Mm. And um, I want to do that. Like, I'm always hard on myself. But um, you can only control so much. Yeah. You can only control the things that you can control after that. Like if if I've done my best, mm. I've done my best. This is truly my best mm. and I'm, I can't do it anymore yeah. beyond that. Yeah. And I'm happy that I gave it my best. The only time I'd be upset is if I if I didn't yeah. train enough or if I didn't give my craft 100% and I stepped in the ring and um, I kind of disappointed mm. myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So I think staying positive is, is very helpful. Like, yeah. yeah, be hard on yourself, you know, train harder the next time. But also acknowledge the good things that you're doing, mm. you know? I think it can be really daunting for people starting out or like they're first starting to compete and to hit that, I guess, that wall. Yeah. You know, whether it's a loss or just feeling a certain kind of way. And it's really hard for people to kind of get themselves back up again. After hitting that wall. Yeah, and I feel mm. like, you know, when when I experience that wall, sometimes you feel like, I don't even know if I can get back Yeah. Back to, you know, some kind of normal. Yeah. Um, and just being able to trust that process, yeah. like you're going to be okay. 100%. Mm. Um, I think that happened to me when I had a string of losses. Mm. I'm like, um, I know I'm doing well. Why am I like, a loss is just a loss. It doesn't mean anything. It's but like, I'm like, yeah, how do I so bounce hard. back? Yeah. yeah. It's so yeah. hard when you're there though. I think I had like, I think I had three fights yeah. that were not great. I yeah. mean, two, two big losses and one draw. But like the draw meant nothing to me because the two losses were like really big for me. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I think after that point, it took like, probably like the rest of the year off mm. I just couldn't mm. get myself to get back into the ring um, but yeah similar kind of thing when you're there you're like I don't understand like conceptually like yeah. I can see how it's being silly yeah like, you know I can just go back into the ring do better but like just could not get myself out of that position yeah, yeah. out of that that um, yeah just like that it feels spiral. like the psyche yeah yeah, 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 like, yeah. once you let yourself go yeah. it's just like oh there you go <laughs> yeah. I'm slipping yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, I, that still comes back to me every now and then mm. but then I bring my focus back to why are you doing this are you doing this to win mm. I'm like no mm -hmm. then what's your reason to compete right. it's to become yeah. a better person then, oh. then the wins and losses shouldn't matter right I'm yeah. like Oh, that's right. So much maturity <laughs> from martial arts. <laughs> Self-realization. Yeah, yeah. So much like deep thinking into it like all the time. But yeah, um, yeah I think coming back to your focus, like mm. the reason why you're doing it. Like if some people have really high ambitions, like mm. making to the Olympics or being yeah. a success or, or like your livelihood might depend on it. Yeah, and yeah. Th that's a different case, oh, yeah. mm. of course. Um, but um even if it if it's at that level, you still have to like if it's purely for money, it would be hard, wouldn't it? it yeah, a lot of paper. A lot of paper. There's other ways to make money too. Yeah, but this true. is more like it's such a personal thing, like yeah. fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. It's 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 good to kind of sit and evaluate. I think yeah. the reason to, yeah to reevaluate after a couple of like fights as well. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, like just to make sure that you're still in the right headspace. You still got the right focuses the right intentions with your journey so it kind of plays out yeah um 
how you want it to, I guess. Mm. Um, or yeah, you kind of just want to have like, just want to enjoy it. Because at the end of the day, I feel like we're not gonna be able to do this forever. No. And it's like I, I wish we could do it forever, but yeah. like, you know, like even with the lockdown, it's like just to have that taken away, and you just realize like how important really the whole thing is. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's like one of those things where I was like, ah, oh, like I just wanted to have a really good go at it. Yeah. Look back on it one day and be like really happy with all the progress that I made. Um, and yeah. And, and the good like, thing is, like, you can still keep training. Oh, yeah, for sure. And yeah. teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's always some way to participate, I guess, at different levels. If you're yeah. not competing anymore, yeah. um, there's always some way you can, yeah, participate and, like, be useful in the community. That's the beauty of martial, martial yeah, arts. Yeah, it is. It really yeah. is. <laughs> um, all right. So, moving forward, <laughs> what are your plans, goals, um, or um, just going with the flow? Um... With comp, well, I always wanted to go to the Olympics. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah, that was my big dream. But uh, I might be getting too old for it. <laughs> Is there a, like an age limit? 35. Really? Mm. Oh, wow. I didn't even know it was an age limit. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, well, it's actually extended. I think it used to be 30, mm. but now they've moved it to 35. Thank Good. God. <laughs> Good. <laughs> they should. Um, but that's fine. I can. I still want to compete on a very high level. Mm. I think that would be. That's my goal for now. Yeah. Um, and then teach. Definitely teach. Mm. I didn't think that I would want to teach as much yeah. um, until I started teaching it. And I'm like, I want to be able to share this with other people, especially women. Aww. Yeah, especially women. Because yeah. I see a lot of women that how martial arts can empower them. Yeah. Because um, as women, we face so many challenges, yeah. like in everyday life. And yeah. and I know I've become a better person from it. Because mm. before martial arts, I was just this timid, shy person. <laughs> and now, like, this has opened up. Yeah. Like, I've come out of my you shell. You believe in yourself. Yeah. 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 But in a different way. It's not like um, you become arrogant and no, you're like, no, no, I can no. punch people up no. in the street. It's yeah. just you carry yourself differently, yeah. you know. Yeah. And like I said I haven't done any other sport and I don't know if any other sport out there can offer the same mm -hmm. but I know martial arts can and I want other people to to see that and other women especially to to yeah, be able to beautiful. you know use that yeah, yeah that's awesome that's my goal for now yeah martial arts is um I don't think it really matters what your passion is to yeah. be honest like it could be skateboarding it could be like calisthenics <laughs> it could be yeah. dancing but I think when you find that that thing that really ignites that that fire in you mm. and like to continue pursuing it mm. um, I think that's really beautiful um, yeah and I guess for us it's martial arts yeah 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 and um, <laughs> yeah I feel like really lucky that we've even found something that you know that could drive us so much to yeah. doing so many things but I feel like without having that passion igniter I wouldn't have done a lot of things I definitely would not be running <laughs> me neither. No, no. Like I always started running because I was like, I want to get better at martial arts. Yeah, or like yeah. I started doing weights because of that as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like now I look back and I'm like, oh, I'm really appreciative for that. Um, for all these things yeah, that martial arts yeah, brings yeah, into yeah, our life, exactly. Right? Yeah, and the people that you have in your life. Yeah. Um, like you, for example. <laughs> um, Same. But yeah, it's it's crazy to think about it. Like mm. so many years on. Um, but yeah, definitely like. It's been inspiring to watch you like train and grow as a person as well um and yeah it's just really cool to be around people like that you know like that 100%. are constantly pushing your own journeys but you kind of like we're not on like a similar path i would say like because you're doing boxing and doing muay thai and aikido but it's like it's the same kind of direction still yeah 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 mm -hmm. it's a similar direction yeah yeah and it's nice yeah. to see that in people like to be able to yeah, I don't know. I get lots of inspiration watching you guys. Like, you know, when yeah, you're doing your same. boxing and you're like, you know, you guys have fights or like just, yeah, just watching the team. Like, yeah. It gives me a lot of like motivation too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what I find good about martial spirit is um, we have a great community. Mm -hmm. And um, I can say this because like, I've seen I've seen other martial arts gyms and how they are. Like when I was going through my struggle, I could always come to you. And I'm like, spring, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Do you have the same feelings too? And you're like, yep, let's go on a run. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk yep. about this. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's just having that support mm. is, is very important. And and that's why I stuck with martial spirit for so long. Because I'm like, I'm pretty sure I don't think I'll find a community like this elsewhere. Like, I'm sure like there's other gyms yeah, that do course. the same. Yeah. But um, that's where martial arts stands out. 
mm. that community of like-minded oh, people yeah mm. that's awesome mm. well thanks for joining me no worries <laughs> thank you for having me pressuring you pressuring you okay all right two one two oh. slow and control yes there you go <laughs> nailed it i love it oh.